Cape Canaveral, Florida, January 16, 2003. Good morning from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This is Space Shuttle Columbia Launch Control. Our countdown for launch of Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-107 is continuing on schedule this morning. Launch remains scheduled to occur at 10.39 a.m. Eastern Time and our launch opportunity window extends for about two hours and 30 minutes. This is the crew of Shuttle Columbia, seven highly qualified astronauts. Rick Husband, age 48, mechanical engineer, Air Force Colonel, father of two. William McCool, age 41, record-setting athlete, renowned aviator, father of three. Alain Ramon, age 48, Israeli Air Force Colonel, decorated fighter pilot, father of four. David Brown, age 46, Navy pilot, medical doctor, photographer. Mike Anderson, age 43, astronomer and physicist, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, father of two. Laurel Clark, age 41, doctor, Navy commander, submarine medical officer, mother to one. Kalpna Chala, known as KC, age 41, flight instructor, PhD in aerospace engineering. This crew has been waiting almost three years to blast into orbit. With each delay came more rigorous training sessions added to their already aggressive regimen, making them one of the best trained crews in NASA history. Astronauts, scientists, and crew trainers worked closely to choreograph and orchestrate the entire mission timeline. Dr. Angel Abud Madrid the lead scientist for one of the combustion experiments was humbled by the experience of training these extraordinary people. Of course, they ask a lot of questions, just like anybody would ask about the experience. Why are you flying it? Um, what is that you're expecting to get? And then they got into the question of how can we help you to maximize your science? How do we uh, act as your eyes, your ears, your hands up there to make this work? And, and that's when you, we started feeling a little bit more comfortable uh, about explaining, okay, this is the way you can help us to do that. And it was not until the first lunch break when we actually started talking about general conversation that you started realizing that these were normal human beings. It became obvious that this crew opened more than just their minds to learning. They also opened their hearts and homes to those who worked with them. Beth Van was one of the crew trainers for STS-107. So with all of the slips, we had all these extra training sessions, and the crew members would often invite us to their homes or invite us to go out to dinner, uh, as well as the scientists. So, you know, you're sitting around the dinner table and you're talking about your family and your life and where you're from, and it was just, uh, just a really neat experience. I'm kind of, kind of a joke is that I'm like their cruise director, and uh, which, plan out their schedule, make sure they're in the right place at the right time, going from train event to train event for those activities. My favorite photograph that I ever took with the crew is we had just finished our practice launch countdown and the crew was taking a shot at the 215 foot level at the pad. And so I crouched down in front of them and had my picture taken. And the thing that I love about the picture so much is that I can see Rick Husband putting his hand on me, Culpa putting her hand on me in a lawn, and they just were so warm and caring and they just reached out in friendship and that's just a cherished photograph for me for the rest of my life. The succession of frustrating delays produces a silver lining for everyone involved in this mission. The crew, the scientists, and NASA. They've become an international space family, a band of brothers and sisters, all working toward a unique scientific journey. Major breakthroughs in a variety of science disciplines are anticipated by researchers on the ground. This is the Telescience Support Center, just a floor above NASA's main mission control room at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Dr. John Charles is NASA's mission scientist for Columbia. 
So this is not a space station flight, it was a, an individual shuttle flight on a different orbit from the space station entirely. Uh, and uh, dedicated from launch to landing to doing research. Uh, no construction, no spacewalks, just uh, research and flight. Columbia Launch Director. Go ahead. Okay, Rick, if there's ever a time to use the phrase, uh, all good things come to people who wait, this is one time. And uh, for you and your crew, best of luck on this mission and from the many, many people who put this mission together, good luck and Godspeed. Oh, we appreciate it, Mike. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day here, and uh, we're going to have a great mission. We appreciate all the great hard work everybody's put into this, and we're ready to go. Final checks are made, buckles are fastened, and visors are shut and locked. Years of preparation boil down to this single moment. The fuel canister, taller and heavier than the Statue of Liberty, is set for ignition. Some 500,000 gallons of highly volatile fuel will burn in under 10 minutes at a temperature of more than 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Right from our crew to yours, best wishes on your international mission to explore the science, peace, and potential that only space travel can offer. 15 seconds. 11, 10, Seven, we have a go for main engine start. Five, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. When the shuttle reaches a height of 150,000 feet, the solid rocket boosters separate, sending craft and crew into orbit. 